Good afternoon, YouTubers. Hope you're all doing well today. Welcome to another edition of Conquer All Electrical Limited. I'm Andrew here. I'm the owner. Uh, just want to remind you these videos take a lot of work, so please like and subscribe. Uh, there's also, we'll put a link to our website in the bottom of the sub, uh, description in case you want to click over to our website. Anyway, today we're going to talk about what different types of light switches you can find in a newer style home or an older style home if you have rental work going on. Um, so let's start with the first one. This is known as a single pole toggle switch. Um, basically it's a single line break. It has two, uh, two terminals on the side and on this side is a ground. So basically this would be for your basic light switch uh, in a room just to simply turn it off and on. There's an indicator, a uh, little indicator on the bottom. Whoops, that's the wrong way. There we go. For off and on. Uh, so you can see where it's off and then on. So it's quite simply a single pole toggle style switch. We call it toggle because it just simply goes up and down. Uh, everybody's got these in their homes. Second style. Um, if you've got more than one thing and you want to switch it into uh, or save space, I should say. This is known as a toggle over under switch. So these switches basically, so instead of having two switches like this, you can have them like this. Um, and they also have the indicator for the on and off. And they have a ground on the side. And on this side, they have a common. So you connect your one black wire to power both sides of the switch. And then this side would be uh, to switch one light and then to switch another light or a plug or whatever you want to switch. Uh, just making sure I'm getting in the camera angle here good. So yeah, that's that one. And then we have a single pole decora switch. Uh, these are quite common. I usually put these in higher end homes. They just give a nicer aesthetically pleasing look. Uh, they're the square style. So you'll see these in a, in a lot of newer homes. Basically, they have a ground on the side, and they also have the two-line brake here and here. Next, we're going to move on to the decor style over-under switch. So they make these in a decor as well, um, and it's similar to the toggle, which I just held up. So yeah, that's the over-under switch um, in the decor style. And again, that's like for the bathroom if you want to switch a fan and, say, a light or vanity light and again they have the ground on the side uh, the common on this side and then the two separate terminals for for each each one now let's move on to some bigger stuff uh, we're going to talk about a four-way i don't know if i have a three-way here but anyway so here's a four-way switch so this is a decor style they also come in toggle uh, on the back you're going to have line and load. So simply, this is for switching like a 240 volt uh, load, let's say a hot water tank. You can go up to 15 amps. So you'd have, you bring your line on your 240 volt side on this, and then your load going out uh, on this. So that's important that you get those correct and follow the wire diagram on the back. So yeah, um, next, let's get into... A four-way. So a four-way, um, basically, this is a four-way toggle. Sorry, I think I might have showed you the four-way. Anyway, we'll call this a four-way toggle. Um, basically, these wires, when you're coming in the back, they flip and they they cross each other. So whichever position the switch is in, um, it's going to change the direction at the current flow um, through the two end switches which would be your three ways so this is for multiple position switching so if you have like your three ways or some people call them two ways but technically we call them three ways uh, from the top and the bottom of the stairs you would put a four way in if you want a third position and if you want to add more positions you'd have four ways continuing on so you'd have two three ways at the end and then a bunch of four ways in the middle i'm just going to grab a three way here so there's a decor three-way switch. Um, on the back, you can see there's three terminals. So your common would be here, which is your black, and then your two travelers here. So the travelers are what run between the uh, 
the three-way switch and the four-way switch. That's actually the four-way switch. So it's important when you look on the back of these switches, you're going to see an in and an out. I don't know if you can see that in the light. It's important that you bring the two travelers to the in, and then the other two travelers will go out to your next three-way. If you cross these, you're going to have all kinds of funky things going on, and it's not going to work correctly. So that's important to get those get those right. Um, okay, let's talk about some dimmer switches. There are a variety of different style dimmer switches on the market. Um, a lot of times we'll install a dimmer switch, and the customer won't really realize it's a dimmer switch, and then they'll call and say, well, this doesn't dim. Well, okay, so here's an example of one. This dimmer switch is just simply touch up and down. And to dim the light is right here. So that actually, this is a this is a three-way dimmer switch. Uh, it has the common here and then the two travelers. And they come with a wiring diagram. This is just a ground that hooks onto the back of the box. And I should mention that um, these tabs here, when you put these in a multi-gang, uh, it's important to break these tabs off to get the switches to fit correctly so that you can line these up. And just follow the manufacturer's directions. I think every time you break one of those tabs off, that's less heat that can dissipate, so it, it cuts the rating back on the dimmer. Generally, most dimmers are rated for 600 watts, which is substantial if you're talking LED lights. Um, here's another type of dimmer. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna open it, but this is a, a Lutron dimmer, and that's just basically the same touch up and down, and then it has a slider. And that's rated for LED as well. And that actually has wires off the back. So instead of terminals, you'd have to uh, wire them in with wire connectors or wire nut connectors, whatever you want to call them. And here's another type of dimmer. This one's more obvious style. Slider up and down. Everybody's seen these uh, back and forth. And a lot of people have those old rotary dimmers. And uh, number one thing that I see, the dimmer, it's a dimmer. It's not a fan controller. So... They'll try to put a ceiling fan up and use the, the dimmer for uh, the fan. It's, it's not going to work. It's going to burn out in a relatively short amount of time. Okay, here's a toggle dimmer. See, this is the ones we have confusion about because people say, well, I thought you put a dimmer in. Yeah, okay, we did. It's right there. See, that slides up and down. And that's also rated for uh, two positions or three ways. So they can be tied in with the circuit. Um, and these also have the wiring right on the back as well. Oh no, sorry, these have the terminals. So you'd have your, your common uh, terminal and then your two travelers as well. Okay, what else have we got here? Smart switches. Wi-Fi controlled. These things are great. Um, they can also be a lot of problems. We have a lot of experience with these now. So basically, you can get these on Amazon. Um, you can get them from your local hardware store. Prices vary. Just check and make sure you have your proper UL approvals or your CSA approvals wherever you're gonna install it. Um, they're quite common. They need a power feed and they will shut the light off just by touch or on, uh, back and forth. And you can also get an app to operate them from your phone. That's what makes them so great. So through my phone, I have several of these devices in my home. I can time my lights to come on when I want, shut them off. I can be away and tell them to turn on. The problem is, if you have Wi-Fi and you add a few of these switches, it's no problem. But if you start doing a whole smart home, um, that's going to slow your Wi-Fi signal down quite a bit. I notice when the kids are here and they're on their tablets or their phones, and the st it slows it right down. So what I ended up doing was buying a second router, and I linked all of this smart equipment to that router. Uh, so it wasn't uh, slowing down my main Wi-Fi. So I actually have two Wi-Fi's in my home. So just keep that in mind if you're going to start adding a number of switches, um, especially smart switches, that it's important that you get a separate hub or a rotor. Um, now, different brands have different specific mini hubs uh, that we call them or rotors that come with the equipment, but that limits you to that specific brand name. So if you just buy a generalized router, um, with its own Wi-Fi signal, you can pretty much link anything that you get on the internet to these uh, to these routers. So yeah, great, great, great stuff. Um, so I've just so rudely learned that when you're making a video on your cell phone, you should always put it on Do Not Disturb because uh, it clicked right in 
right in the middle. So what I was going to say was these timers, um, they're great. I have one on my swimming pool. They're rated up for 1.5 horsepower. They're seven-day programmable timers, and they work very well. Uh, you can put all kinds of programs in here, and they just simply wire a uh, double pole, uh, 240 volt, right into your wall. So, yeah, they're, they're pretty great. They're made by Honeywell. Um, and also, I'll put uh, a link into the description. Sorry, it's only rated for one horsepower, up to 2,400 watts. Seven-day programming. So, uh, and this does require a neutral to make the timer work. Anyway, uh, that's it. I hope you guys liked all the switches that I talked about today. Remember again to like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.